Hey guys, hope you're well. Here's a quick update on my data logger motorcycle dashboard project. Uh, I've been evolving it for the last couple of weeks and if you can remember or jump back to my first episode, um, I was aiming to use uh, Arduino Mega and a bunch of sensors, temperature sensors um, TOF laser distance sensors and the um, GPS for lap timing purposes um, combine it all together use SD card reader and build a uh, dash plus data logger uh, system that I would then mount onto my uh, truck motorcycle but as soon as I started um, hooking it all up and measuring the performance uh, and the speed of data logging I've noticed that uh, Arduino Mega is not a good choice for that solution because there are a bunch of things that are happening you've got GPS working in the background you've got SD card so IO interaction to store the data and then you've got sensing and of course we wanted to have a dashboard uh, so some sort of LCD display um, to display the data whilst I'm writing. And that didn't pan out very well. There were long delays mostly, I believe, because of the fact that that's just one CPU uh, on the Arduino Mega and it's not that fast. So what I did, I moved on and evolved this and replaced it with um, a solution where this is actually how it's go looking in a row um, sort of uh, wooden dashboard uh, setup but I replaced Arduino with ESP32 it's got two cores uh, so we can multi-thread we can run several parallel processes it supports RTOS so real-time operating system so you can uh, read data from GPS in a separate thread than uh, write, writing data to SD card and so on. It supports Bluetooth, I'll talk about that in a second, but it, and, it, and actually it works 10 times faster than Arduino. So I'm quite happy with it. Uh, of course it's got Wi-Fi built in. Price wise it's not, basically I think it's the same price as for Arduino. So I think it, that was a really good choice. Seems to work well. You can see I've just designed, this is the intermediate stage. So you will see that the more advanced in the second one, in a second, but uh, you can see that I've attached a couple of sensors. So temperature sensor, gyroscope, GPS. And I've also have these handlebar buttons that I will attach to my motorcycle so, it, so I could switch some of the screens um, and manipulate some of the uh, display data uh, using those toggle buttons because it'd be really hard to use the LCD display or actually interact with the dashboard. And I'm also using um, next gen display. As you can see here, I've built a very, very simple just data logging or actually data telemetry inspection uh, dash where I'm putting all the measured data in here. So we've got the temperature, uh, we've got the distance sensors for my shop travel in front and the back, we've got the gyroscope and of course GPS right now, I mean home so it's not um, catching the satellite signal at the moment. The interesting and nice thing is I've also been able to hook it up with the Wahoo for collecting my heartbeat rate through Bluetooth BLE. As I said, ESP supports that, which is really good. So I've got that on board as well. And uh, that data is quite useful as well because, you know, if you are on a racetrack, uh, you get uh, tired and you need to keep a good pace, but also know when to 
um, stop racing and save some strength for the next sessions. Uh, you know, it's a, a very exhausting sport. Uh, so that's working really good. Uh, another nice thing is I was able to integrate it with the, uh, the pressure sensors, tire pressure sensors. It's using Bluetooth BLE as well. And I'm able to capture that data uh, via uh, ESP32 and then again have it displayed on my dashboard. So that means I can not only monitor the temperature of the tires, but also um, the pressure of the tires. Although I will have to investigate it further because these sensors activate once the, there is a sudden pressure increase or drop or when the wheel is moving. So when I've got my tire warmers on, uh, it may be that they just stop transmitting data. So uh, it will be a little bit annoying to sort of unscrew and screw them back just to get the readouts. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So this is how it looks like in a row form. And I moved on to another uh, evolutionary stage where I've printed this um, dashboard. I've put the next gen display inside it as well as all of the internals uh, explained in, in stage two version. We also have the LED display around this and the uh, SD card is sticking on the right side. Um, I'm not sure if this is the final stage. Of course, we've got the box where all the sensors will be connected to. So this is yet to be done on my motorcycle and probably will be using some sort of a connectors that I can easily detach because the plan is to be able to easily remove the whole unit in case I need it to take it out from the motorcycle and not to worry about detaching all other parts. Of course, we've got this handlebar buttons control unit and we also have the um, Bluetooth BLE communication with my motorcycle helmet. So as I said before in my previous episode, what I want to do is I want to display some of the useful data using the LEDs. It actually works quite nice as a very, very raw hard display inside the helmet because you can beam those lights and they just provide a reflection from the back of the visor. So if you do it smartly, I think you can transmit some of the useful data directly to your eye, uh, the region that you can capture that even without looking on those LEDs or the actual display. Uh, one important thing regarding the display is that I had to actually uh, buy a separate LCD, just that LCD, uh, and mount it on next-gen mainboard. Uh, that LCD provides much better brightness and contrast in the daylight. And if you look up on the forums, on the internet, you will see that some of the guys suggested that and used that. Um, and replace the next gen display because when you go into the daylight uh, pretty much you won't be able to see anything on that original display so that was quite easy just remove that one and plug it to the the main board and seems to be working quite well i could use the leds or imitate the leds on the display but uh, I think it's useful to have them over there as a separate system for doing any diagnostics or transmitting information apart from the LCD. If it goes down, I can still rely on those bits. Right now, you know, I've just hooked it up to um, gyroscope and that's it. So there's not much to display. Uh, I'm not even connected to the real sensors. But I think you get the idea. Of course, we can switch back to uh, our 
status page and switch back using those buttons, of course. Uh, so a little bit of control has been pre-programmed as well. And what I'm thinking of doing right now is um, using those left and right LEDs to signal information about tire temperature. Is it within the range? If not, signal it with the colors. Tire pressure, front and rear rotor temperature and probably engine temperatures. So these will be provided on the left and the right. And on the top, I was thinking about configuring the GPS so that there are several sections on the track that are being constantly measured. And for each section, I will be displaying whether I've progressed. So I've made the progress, I've made that section, uh, I've written that section faster, or slower, um, as well as information whether the overall track uh, lap was faster than the previous one. Um, so that's pretty much it. The other thing I might use is, a long time ago I said I could attach that bit to the back of the, the tail section of my motorcycle, and that's a long range laser sensor, so I could actually uh, identify whether someone's tailing me and use Bluetooth to transmit that information to my head and to my central unit and signal it somewhere here. That could potentially, just for fun, give me more information about what's happening behind me and whether I should change my uh, um, racing lines uh, to make it more difficult for someone uh, to overtake me. Well, it's, it's, it's a bit of cheating, so I'm not sure if I would do that. But on the other hand, if it works, maybe that would be fun. So uh, we'll see how it works. Probably I will be evolving that design a little bit further to minimize the amount of cables probably use some automotive connectors I can easily unplug and quickly take it out from the uh, motorcycle. But so far, I'm quite happy with the current design, more importantly with the performance of ESP32 uh, chipset, the ability to multi-thread it, so I can now uh, separate the writing to SD card from the thread that's doing the sensing and then I can have a separate thread that's doing the display. Actually, to be honest, uh, the most of the time that's being stolen, I'm also measuring how long it takes to make one cycle. And that version doesn't run in distributed multi-threaded mode. It's 150 milliseconds to harvest all the data from sensors. This is actually very fast, but uh, the most of the time is taken by transmitting data to the next chain. So you need to be careful if you're transmitting multiple data points, just make sure that you optimize that code and just update things that have changed because that's taking most of the time, over 100 milliseconds is taken to push all those readouts to the dashboard. Uh, but with the multi-threaded version, it will not hamper the data logging efficiency as well as uh, GPS uh, data input frequency. So um, that's good. Uh, so this is how it looks right now. Probably in the next video, I'll be showing you how it is being mounted on the motorcycle and how other sensors are being attached to the motorcycle. There will be a little bit of 3D printing involved as well to hide and cover these sensors, especially the temperature sensors that be close to the wheels. And as well, one riddle to solve would be how to mount this whole unit so that it can be easily detached and removed if I uh, need it. I will also tinker with this, see what's the best way to locate those LEDs, how many LEDs, because you know you, you need to have a widespread set of LEDs so you can actually see with your peripheral vision what's changing and 
well, probably just test it in the wild to see whether it makes sense and it's not obstructing me. But if it is, I will just program uh, some of those buttons to, for example, remove all the display or certain to sort of uh, suppress some of the signals if they will be distracting me. Um, okay, guys, that's, I think, pretty much it. Again, if you've got questions, um, just let me know. I'd be happy to uh, answer them and help you if you're attempting to do something similar. See you later. Bye.